In this video, I'm going to describe some of the new capabilities that are available in Conveyor version 2. Uh, Conveyor is a toolkit that allows users to have more direct integrations between Rhino and Revit. Uh, Conveyor version 1 was released in March 2020 um, and exposed a series of commands that allow us to uh, selectively import Rhino objects from Rhino, external Rhino files. And what you'll see even in Conveyor version 2 is that a lot of those capabilities are still available. Um, for example, I can launch the Rhino Conveyor interface and select objects from the uh, Rhino file um, and selectively import them in. I can update them, uh, classify them as different elements and, and so on with this interface. Um, still a very useful workflow and one that we find to be uh, very powerful and, and direct, especially if you are dealing with external Rhino files. Um, when we looked at the new capabilities in Rhino 7, we saw that there are a number of new workflow opportunities available to users, uh, namely a new technology called Rhino Inside. And what Rhino Inside allows you to do is launch Rhino as if it were a plugin to another application. And if you were to go to the uh, Rhino Inside Revit website, you'll be able to download a beta of this. And what McNeil has done with this plugin is it uh, allows Rhino to be launched inside of Revit, and they've exposed a whole new set of components within Grasshopper. So the, the main use case of this workflow is to allow Grasshopper to be positioned uh, as a viable uh, toolkit within the Revit context, and in some ways provide an alternative pathway for uh, users of Dynamo um, if, for example, you prefer to use Grasshopper in this context. So really powerful stuff. Um, what we wanted to do with Conveyor is introduce a set of very simplified workflows that anyone can use um, to bring their Rhino objects into the Revit environment in a similar direct manner and build on top of the Rhino Inside framework. Um, ultimately, we believe that users of workflows and people that need levels of integration may not necessarily be computational designers. They may not use Grasshopper or Dynamo, or you know, quite frankly, they might find those interfaces very intimidating. And uh, they what we wanted to do with Conveyor is provide a pathway for folks that are using uh, direct modeling and direct uh, Rhino modeling commands um, to be able to migrate their geometry over. So what I'll do here is show the other, the new pathway for launching Conveyor and, and, and using our technology to facilitate geometry and data migration into Revit. So when you have Rhino inside Revit installed, you'll see under the add-ins tab, there is a Rhino command. This will launch Rhino inside Revit. And then you'll see a Rhinoceros tab appear. And here you'll see a variety of different plugins uh, for launching Rhino and launching Grasshopper, a um, couple of cool uh, Python uh, editors and, and some importers there. And you know the primary use case for using this is built around Grasshopper, but we wanted to add a new dimension for users of just Rhino. So what I can do here is just activate the Rhino interface. Um, and just like uh, if you were to launch Rhino externally of Revit, you have all of the commands um, and plugins that you may have installed available to you uh, for direct modeling operations. So extruding, uh, lofting, trimming, uh, Boolean operations are all there for kind of folks that want to directly sculpt uh, their geometry and, and model anything. Um, what we've done is introduced within the Rhino context a conveyor plugin. And for users of version one, this, this plugin may look quite familiar. It's a toolbar that allows users to assign and classify geometry. Um, but what we've introduced in conveyor version two is Rhino Revit Direct. And what this allows you to do is selectively uh, send and receive information uh, with Revit. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just dock this window here um, and get that docked in there just like that. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and start looking at some of these commands that are available. So I'm going to go ahead and expand the Rhino Revit Direct and you'll see that there are a couple of commands available. There's get from Revit. This allows us to get geometry and objects from the Revit environment into Rhino. And then we have send to Revit. This allows users to send Rhino geometry into the Revit environment. 
and these one-click operations uh, can allow for some pretty dynamic uh, exchange of information. So for example, let's say I want to get some contextual information into my Rhino document. What I'll do is I'll simply jump over into Revit here and make a couple of object selections. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select this wall, um, this wall here, uh, as well as I, you can see I selected that roof. Maybe I'll even grab this, this little guy here. And I'm going to go ahead and jump back into Rhino. That's been open through Rhino inside Revit, and I'm going to choose Get from Revit. And what that's going to do is it's going to model uh, the objects that I had selected in Revit, and it's going to create polysurface representations of those objects within the uh, Rhino environment. So now I have some contextual information that I can use to maybe perform some, some modeling activities. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and expand this and so just give myself some a little bit more real estate here. And I'm going to go ahead and maybe just model up uh, a couple of, of surfaces, um, maybe over on this corner of the building. And you know maybe I'll you know, do this with uh, you know some 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 kind of smooth B spline curves. Um, I call them Rhino esque in a way, kind of nervy, smooth, cool curves. And I'll go ahead and extrude this. Um, Again, this is you know Rhino, so it's just you know freeform modeling. You know, uh, sort of lets you sketch and build and conceptualize your ideas uh, very freely. Uh, and when you're in Rhino, you you don't have to worry about parameter constraints or anything like that. Um, I'm just go ahead and rebuild uh, my surface here, just so I have some more control points and make this even more irregular. Um, you know, give this some additional um, finesse to it. So I'm going to go ahead and just use the gumball, kind of push and pull. Um, and stretch this thing around a little bit. Um, you can see I'm not being too scientific about this at all. I'm just uh, pushing and pulling surfaces here. Um, don't want to grab those. Just go ahead and pull that out. Oh, looks like I got a guy there that I don't necessarily need. Let's go ahead and delete them. And I'll go ahead and pull this out as well. So I have now kind of this kind of very regular free form uh, sculpted surface, um, you know, using just conventional Rhino modeling commands. And what I'm also going to do here is maybe even give this a little thickness. So I'll do um, an offset uh, surface. Um, and offset surface will allow me to, you know, um, you know, basically extrude this, uh, offset it a bit so it has a bit of solid thickness. You can see I have it set to solid. Um, and I'm going to maybe extrude this. Um, I don't know, what do you think? Maybe 500 millimeters. Do that. So now we've got a thickened uh, kind of uh, shell object. Again, kind of kind of blobby, kind of nerby. Um, good stuff. So what I want to do is I want to bring this freeform geometry into the Revit environment. And so I now have this object set up. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of maybe navigate to that corner of my building here. And go ahead and open that up there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and classify this object. I'm going to say, OK, now that I've got my geometry correlated. I'm going to go ahead and select it. And I'm going to make this a components object. And I'm going to go ahead and make this generic models. And what you'll see is, uh, you know, I also have this ability to say, I want this to be created as a family. If I have this unchecked, it creates it as a direct shape. Um, but I think for now, I'm just going to go ahead and say, hey, I want this to be a, uh, a family uh, when it ends up a generic model family uh, that ends up in, in my file here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and say send to Revit. And what this is going to do is it's going to use the conveyor translation logic and it's going to go ahead and create a new family in the background. And it's going to bring that object in. Um, and when it gets created, uh, what we'll see here is a representation of that same object loaded into the Revit project. And it is uh, also a family. So it's been consumed within a family um, file. It has uh, family properties. You can, if I look at the shared parameters of this object. I can see where it came from, the layer uh, in Rhino it existed on, the last time it was updated from Rhino. Um, it also has information about the object ID, 
um, and, and other identifiable information about that object. So those parameters can be scheduled. Um, there is also a material layer. Um, so what ends up happening here is when this gets created, this is a, um, in effect, a native Revit uh, piece of geometry um, called a freeform element. So if I go into my family file here, you can see that I've got my um, object. And if I hover over it, you can see that it's a freeform element. So it means it can accept materials and, and, and all of that good stuff. So uh, I don't want to save that. Um, so we've now kind of created a bi-directional uh, demonstration here of conveyor version 2. Um, we started by bringing some objects over into Rhino um, for context. You can see I brought the roof over and a couple of wall forms. I then very freely sculpted some geometry um, in a very unscientific way within the Rhino environment using direct modeling tools and then using conveyor I was able to send that object back into Revit and, and, uh, and what we have is a family object that can accept materials um, and be used for perhaps further development within the, the Revit environment, um, perhaps for some documentation. So that's, uh, I guess, a, an introductory overview of what you can do with Conveyor V2. Uh, we have capabilities for getting objects into Rhino, sending objects to Revit, um, uses the Conveyor translation logic that we've been uh, cultivating over the last several years as proving ground um, and exposing them on top of Rhino inside. So there's a, a nice integration with some new Rhino 7 technology.